Many ages ago, a man bearing that mark united the scattered tribes of the Southlands under one banner, the very banner that might unite them again today against the evil that now seeks to claim their lands, your lands, Halbrand. Your people have no king, for you are him. thoughts when you initially heard that were you uh, like so you were a hal brandis sauron like day sure, one -er. sure 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 so did you think like oh this is all part of his master plan or were you like oh maybe i was wrong yeah there was plenty of healthy skepticism on whether or not it was him like i yeah. was on the ride you know watching it now i'm like Gladriel, how are you making these gigantic leaps of logic? It's crazy. Like, like she's doing Olympic level Russian. I've been training since three year old floor routines yeah. to get to the fact that she's calling him the king. These like, are little Chinese gymnasts with their baby teeth still in kind of like triple stolen front from their back family. Flips. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus. But I, all that is to say is like. <laughs> But they won the gold. <laughs> <laughs> and their family can continue living. Right. Um, <laughs> they might be allowed to have another child. Um, the other the thing, though, I'm not trying to make light of a very serious communistic issue that China's going through. But um, the the thing, like I'm looking at this, that thing that opened, we just opened the podcast with, is a really good example of her, like, blinded by her... I'm reading Dune right now, so I can't get rid of this word. The, like her jihad, essentially. Like she, oh, this yeah. is this is her plan, and so she's just putting. She she couldn't know how right she is that he is the king, but how wrong she is. Um, it's not wrong. He is the king of the Southlands. He like. literally <laughs> is. So it, it, but it's. For me, um, also, uh, this is Rings of Power with Ben and Jess. Welcome to oh, the podcast, No, everybody. this is not Rings of Power. This is Podcast of the Rings watching Rings See? of Power. So that's why I don't do the intros. <laughs> um, Sorry. Just... <laughs> but where there's I, a whip, Ben. <laughs> knowing where we end up, like when she discovers, you know, the truth about Halbrand, you know, the rings and stuff like that. There isn't like, uh, or at least we haven't gotten it yet. We didn't get it in season one, and I was talking about that um, in the in while well, I was playing video games last night. Where shows nowadays, it it's really strange that there's not a single season narrative for a lot of shows. A lot of shows, like the first season, is almost like a prologue, and it's really strange and really off putting. That, yes, I know there's going to be an overarching narrative. Like, they bought this show for, they bought the rights for five seasons. We are getting five seasons come hell or high water. Unless, you mm -hmm. know, Jeff Bezos gets, like, super bored on his yacht. And it's like, ah, more models in cocaine. No more rings of power. <laughs> I love that you put your hands to your hair. That's something he can't do. <laughs> he can't do. Uh, that's why his biceps are so huge. So he can't like touch his head anymore. Are they huge? That actually he's is so bar. Like he's that's legitimately worse. he's legitimately Lex Luthor. Like uh, it's it's crazy. But like uh, what what was it called? Jupiter Netflix. Jupiter's Legacy. There was this show on Netflix. It was a superhero show called Jupiter's Legacy. It was with um, Leslie Bibb and Josh Duhamel. We're like oh. the, kind of the two big stars. It wasn't very good. Um, I watched it for uh, a project and it was eight episodes long. And in all eight episodes, it was like present day, they're superheroes. And then during the Great Depression, Josh Dumail is like a rich guy who loses his business and everything. And then he gets these mysterious signs and has to go on this journey and everyone thinks he's crazy. And it leads to, you know, this pocket dimension where they get their powers from Jupiter or something. This but is you, I'm really following. <laughs> it's And that's the thing is that what they should have done is that one episode was the flashback episode where they get their powers. Not sure. all eight episodes. You're going back and forth in time. And... At the end of the eight episodes, I guess I won't spoil it for the people that want to watch this one season that didn't get renewed because it's not a good show. 
they reveal the actual big villain and they're like, okay, now it's time to go. I'm like, oh, what? Eight <laughs> hours later, now you're going to start the show? Like, and that's how I feel about this is that, yes, the, the Hal Brand reveal is big, but there's no like recompense of like Galadriel saying, ah, oh, I was blinded by revenge and this and that. It's just like, okay, now we've got Sauron. Now we're going to start the show. It's like, what? Yeah. I, now, I, I think to that point, and probably what will happen in season two, is her journey of accepting the fact that she sparked life back into her mortal enemy. You know what I mean? Like, that's, what, that's her emotional arc for season two. But that begs the question, do we care? Like, does that, is that something we want to watch her go through? Um, like, although, are we gonna we're are we gonna go from brooding revenge Galadriel to brooding depressed because I brought about the second apocalypse Galadriel? Like, and that's and honestly, whoa, if, and it feels like that's the arc there. Yeah, it's like we're gonna get the same kind of mood and everything like that. And that's the problem with you know being around elves is that they're not very like enthusiastic. They don't like show <laughs> happiness, you know, when Aragorn you mean like like her riding on the beach and smiling. Oh, my. Like I, this? Jessica, I had for, we <laughs> did don't... the watch along subscribe to the Patreon guys <laughs> for my IRL reaction of that. I had forgotten about that. I, I, I don't know if I had like looked at my phone or something during this moment or what. But this moment had been you missed all the memes. I did. I missed all <sighs> of this. It's Morphic Clark is a gorgeous, amazing actor. No one's saying that she isn't. This moment does her no favors. I don't know who saw this because the rest, like the rest of the shot, them riding on the beach, her, her gown flowing in the wind. Gorgeous, beautiful filmmaking. And then they show her smile because, and even like narratively, it makes no sense because she goes from about to kill Ellen Deal. Like, Elendil literally about to kill him. Like, she's like, he, and he's like joking with her. Like, I don't know, maybe this little uh, tugboat, you know, this little rowboat won't make it uh, over the sea. She's like, well, I'm going to slit your throat if you get in my way. <laughs> and she's like, right. <laughs> Immediately after. Immediately after goes from like uh, the... Brendan Fraser in George of the Jungle, like 90s slow-mo with horses. Like, it was wild. It was such a wild transition. So this is what happens, I think, when you're too close to a project and too close to your actors. Because if you are just looking at Morpheth Clark, you are you know she's beautiful and that smile is beautiful because nothing is more beautiful than someone experiencing true joy and yeah. Morpheth is is giving us that but if you're JD and the other showrunner you just like Morpheth and so you're like you know what this is a beautiful shot of her it's not of Galadriel no it's it, yeah. it's all types of wrong because sure it's it's it does her no favors. It does her no favors as Galadriel, though. If we're just watching her in a different movie as that shot, no one's going, you know, whatever. It's it's narr narrowistically, as you said, narr narr narratively, narratively incorrect. And I don't know that we is this the time you show us Galadriel smiling? See, when I remember you bringing this up, and I I thought I honestly thought. You had meant during the charge of the Numenorians. I was like, that would make sense. Where she's back in Middle Earth, she's there to fight. She's got an army with her that she's wanted the whole time. She's got people that believe in her, or at least in this cause that they are fighting, right. Right. like the evilness in the Southlands. And you know, the Numenorians have returned to Middle Earth, something that has not happened in generations. And so I always thought it was that moment. I didn't think it was. Because that would make sense. Maybe, you know, she does gotcha. like a little wry elvish smile, which is, you know, when you see Legolas smile at Gimli, like when he says, like, or should I find you a box? Like, that's huge. <laughs> that is huge. I don't know. I'd have to like rewatch it. But it's like, I don't think we'd seen Legolas smile up until that moment. We don't see his moment. teeth. Yeah, <laughs> and then like when when Air in that same kind of vein, like when Aragorn hugs Haldir, like he smiled. Like you know, elves don't. It seems like they don't hug. 
So like they're not very expressive beings. So I don't know. I know it's you're like right a, though. You're right. Yeah. Like this is better. I don't know that we want to see her smiling per se as she goes off to murder thousands of people, but feeling like she's in her place and in the right. Like how, let's watch her go through this struggle a little bit more. Yeah. You know. Yeah. This this episode is not through and throughout bad. It's not. It's not as through and throughout bad as episode two was, where really and, and truly, I don't know that we would have continued watching if the dwarves didn't come in. Yeah. This is, finally we're on Numenor. You know, she asked the dumb questions, are they captors or, you know, saviors? Saviors or captors. If they were... I guess they could they could be slavers, they could be slave traders, so it, it but is But she like possible. asked that before she eats the food like it's poisoned or something. Yeah, like, that which is, that was weird. It was like why would they if they're like bad people, they probably wouldn't have rescued you. If they're slavers, they're not going to kill you with poison. Yeah. And if they wanted to kill you, they could they probably have weapons and you don't. They just and kill also, you. Halbrand, who saved you, which you kind of probably know, is giving you the food, so do you not trust him? It's just a silly, it's like, it's a helpful question, but it's like a little bit dumb in the timing of it. Uh, we meet Elendil, who, honest to God, is zaddy. He is so hot. So hot. It's, He's so hot. I had forgotten, but then, like, that conversation between him and Galadriel, uh, you, you, ship, you guys can ship Halbrand and Galadriel if you want. It's Ellen Deal and Gladriel for me. Like that conversation they have is so charged with sexual tension when he's like just she is a powerful immortal elf goddess. And this sailor <laughs> is just like, Yeah, you're not gonna make it. What are you gonna do? It's he's, like, oh. he's got the Riz to meet her Riz. Like he's it, not because Gimli is, can't even look at Galadriel. Let's yeah. fast forward. Gimli can't look at her. Yeah. It's like <laughs> straight like, out of up? like an airport book talk, like roman romance novel of where, you know, they're going to go out to sea. But, oh, no, there's only one cabin with one bed. And it's like oh, and only one life raft. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Some stupid like something like that. But the actor who plays Ellen Deal is so Ooh. great. Um, I don't think the same of Isildur. I'm really excited to see what happens with him in season two. I don't like that, you know, like we're, we're, we're going to be talking about all the spoilers from every episode, but it's just like, I don't like that the whole last thing was like, oh, is he dead or not? And like, we know he's not dead. Like, yeah. We know yeah. that. Come, guys, yeah. like there's certain things, you know, in, in but Solo. But people who don't War know this don't know that, you know, like people, like my friend Kelly, who has not read the books, uh, and only watch the movies may not remember who a sealed door is if she hasn't re like some people don't we have to give them i mean i, th I for me there's like a difference because like you watch you know solo a star wars story and you know there's a lot of very harrowing moments with han solo and chewy and it's like yeah we know they they live <laughs> but it can still be exciting it can still sure. be a well-crafted action scene with like whoa that was a close call Sure. But a teaser. Whoa, that was a close call. <laughs> Whoa, yowzers, folks. Tune in next week to Solo. I'm not well, sorry. <laughs> Unlike anybody I've ever done a podcast with, and it's great. It's uh, great. Sponsored you by mean... Ovaltine. Drink your Ovaltine, kids. It'll make your bones strong. <laughs> but, uh, but like, there's a difference between that and then an entire season long cliffhanger of is this sealed or dead? Like, that's, yeah. that's different. You have to yeah. know your audience because. A majority of the audience by episode 10 are big Lord of the Rings fans because a lot of this show doesn't do its best to hook general audiences, in my opinion. So I, I actually just have to offer like a, a differing opinion. I've heard from several people. Again, this is all okay. anecdotal. You don't need to. Okay. <laughs> so then we get back to the stranger. <laughs> oh, um. my God. <laughs> Yeah, go on. Yeah, you're right. This, this is the kind of podcast I'm going to be part of. <laughs> My only offer is that, like, there's a few people that I've talked to who are like, yeah, I don't know anything about the Silmarillion. I've only watched the movies, and I'm totally in. Like, there cool. was there was the contingency of people who knew a little too much that didn't like that this because they knew so much about the Silmarillion and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Where, like, I don't blame people for wanting to call it, like, fan fiction, but it can be excellently done fan fiction. Because it does diverge from, like, what Silmarillion says about some stuff. But um, 
I'm just saying ner- narratively, and some of the s- smartest people I know that I do improv with, that our thing is narrative improv, love this show. So something was, they were doing something right. I think it just didn't work for us who knew a little too much. Yeah, I mean, and it's not even, the, the Silmarillion, I've, I haven't read the Silmarillion since I think high school. I, I need to read it again. Do you? Uh, I, I'd like to read it again, at least. Um, it's one of those things that, like, I just, no matter, I believe, I believe What's-His-Face did an, um, an audiobook of it. Um, S- S- Andy Serkis? Yeah, I'd listen yeah. to that. Yeah, I'd be down for that for sure. Uh, but I don't know. It's just, it's tough because, like, even some of my nerdiest friends who do love Lord of the Rings are just like, this. Di- a lot of this, like, didn't hook me. Uh, yeah, and it's not yeah. about knowing where the story goes because a lot, you know, there's plenty of people that have read Game of Thrones and were on board for all of that and sure. Dune and everything. But I don't know. Uh, but going back to the episode, I like a lot of the Numenorian stuff. Um, I don't. This is where the Game of Thrones effect hits a little too hard for me. I like you know kind of gritty fantasy. I think that's cool. I like that. I don't know what they could have done different with Numenor, but I don't want to see political intrigue. Like this is this is a time of peace, a time of sure. prospering, not of like political maneuvering and you know, uh, the big bearded guy being the little finger of Numenor. Like I, I he was though in the Silmarillion. He he sowed seeds of dissension, but he was married to the queen. Oh, okay. So well, this so it's not. I stand corrected so, then. No, I, I'm not going to be able to fully say this is, but he was the um, original hater of, or like he, he stoked the flames of hate towards the elves. There was a lot, like he was not a a, a solid dude. Yeah. Um, so some of that's there. Just what's, what the the difference right now is that Farazon isn't uh, married to the queen. So either he like will weasel his way into that situation in the next season or so, yeah. or, or just take over. So, I do. I do like the first meeting with the queen and Galadriel. Cause it shows kind of like how one track minded Galadriel is that she's not willing to be not even like politically correct. Just like, just welcome, just nice. Like she's just like an asshole the whole time. Can you blame her though for, because these people have, for forsaken the elves she's coming on to hostile territory i'm just offering that i'm not saying i'm right i i think the fact that she doesn't even like thank them for rescuing her no yeah she's dumb as fuck i'm just asking if they're like is i know i i guess i can't you know like we see plenty of, of things around the world where just like discrimination is just like sewed into generations without you even realizing it and like you can't get rid of that but she knows the history she also like you guys we gave you this land and you guys forsook us you know and and now i just need to get off this but she is asking them for help you know is that explained in the show she does say that as they're walking up does she i don't remember that she does we were talking while that was happening. She kind of like okay. explains that there's like history here, and you know we used to have a nice alliance between the elves and man, and then they, you know, the Numenorians. Okay, they I are do, no right. men. I do, yeah. I do Again, though, that. it's quick, and you know, these are the first time we're being introduced to these people, and <laughs> I liked what you said though. We have yet to see like happy, or just like no life's one's pretty happy good anywhere, and like. Sauron is the one who makes people unhappy and he's not active right now. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing like this is what I'm talking about is like this is supposed to be like the the prosperous like was it's called the watchful peace. Yeah. Where it's it's supposed to be this time in be- no watchful peace is after uh the white council, but Oh, oh okay. Uh after he's uh, expended from the the dungeon. I think so. I don't know. It's so confusing. No, it's just a lot. But it's just like they're supposed to be like prospering and music and parties and just like you know it's supposed to be like the elves from the hobbit where they're just getting tanked every night (laughs) so much so that you know 13 prisoners can uh, escape from under their noses because they're that drunk and as we know it takes a lot for an elf to get drunk 
So these guys are just like binge drinking like frat boys <laughs> every night. Just like <laughs> puke that's and rally. Way, that's been the best way it's explained to me because I just don't understand. I never understood how like in one book Legolas is like, I can't feel my fingers, you know, or whatever. And these guys are lights out. Maybe Elvish wine Hobbit. is different. Maybe Well, no, like- it's actually it's Lake Town's wine. That's how they get back in the barrels because they send the barrels back to Lake Town. Oh, that's right. You're right. So, so yeah. Lake Town's go like either Lake, poisoning them or Lake Town's on a depression binge right now, so it makes sense. <laughs> They're drinking Everclear over there. That's not wine. <laughs> you know it's not. But, that's, but the thing is, like the people of Lake Town take shots and then the, the elves are just pouring goblets of it and be like, gong, 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 gong. It, so you explain it makes so much more sense to me. But yes, so like the reason you put like you brought this up and I and I can agree with you is like then we meet the Numenorians and they're low down dirty fucks and they like just rabble rouse with Yeah, and they're like, Oh, this outsider, outrage. you like this elf. It's like, oh my god, like I I understand to a certain extent, because you know, maybe you're hinting at that wherever Halbrand goes, like this like edginess and like darkness follows him and like puts people on edge or something, but they don't follow through with that. Like if if it was something of like, oh, as soon as he leaves the bar, everyone becomes cheery again or something like that. Or, you know, you have a guy kind of do the the head shake and be like, oh, what was up with that guy? Or something like that. Something to hint that this guy is the embodiment of pure evilness and like treachery and seduction. And like so much so that, OK, like these guys or you take the route of, oh, these guys are really mad at him, but he's so good. He gets them to buy drinks for him, and oh, he changes their mind, and then oh, it's party. But then, like, you end with him getting beat up in an alley or something. Well, he did like, steal something from them. Like, but, that, but it was like, did he? Sauron is, is he's Sauron. Sauron isn't that stupid that he thinks he can just penny pinch a literal like ID badge, like it's Mission Impossible, and oh, oh, you said you needed this, um. Seal of approval that probably takes years of apprenticeship and citizenship. Well, I've got one. Oh, I, I'm sure that was going to work, Sauron. Great plan. Brought, you're reminding me that I brought this up on the first watch through because it's so fucking dumb when you think about it for too it's long. It's so he, dumb. He, he talked to that guy that day and he's going to go like walk up to him tonight and go like, hey, so now like. uh Yeah. <laughs> well, and so I, I, I wonder, I wonder, because let's not forget. Aragorn, Numenorian, this amazing line of men, mostly because of like, they're like half elf from a free, yeah. you know, like the Baron and Luthien offspring, essentially. Do, do the rest of the Numenorians suck so that we can see how good Elendil is in the face of that and then just get a sense for that future line sense of right and right and wrong? Like, but I need the new. Is that giving them too much credit? <laughs> it's being. It's giving them too much credit because, like, Isildur's, you know, going through, you know, his teenage angst. It seems like I don't know. It's I understand you need to make these characters relatable, but they can still be better. Aragorn was relatable in a certain way, um, of like something you can aspire to be while still having plenty of faults and still having self doubt and regret right. and right. unsurety of yourself, like. There's still plenty of that in Aragorn, but it, this these are just normal people, and they're not supposed to be. Yeah. Like I'm fine with like the the Southlands for the normal people, right? Those are normal men, and that's fine because you have you know like guys like Theo, the kid. He's gonna rise to greater heights, I hope. So, uh, and you know Bronwyn <laughs> is like doing like her best as like a the normal most, human, yeah, for sure. But you know, so that, exactly to that point, Ben. These, we, if it wasn't for Alex when we watched it the first time and him pointing out Sauron Halbrand just dispatched five Numenorean dudes, that's no small feat. But I didn't get that until Alex said it because I have no idea anything about the Numenoreans coming into this. Yeah. Uh, if you're just the average, like me, Lord of the Rings person, like, well, what does that mean though? Because I'm not getting like- never- they never display that. They never. They have, never like, fully the, explain it. Like, they, yeah, you know what I mean. That these are literal different 
they built different people. Yeah. <laughs> you know, their skibbity Riz man is on the Ohio oh cringe. And it's like, they're like really close to flushing it all down this, the bidet. What? Are you glazing over there? <laughs> watch me glaze. Watch, watch, watch me glaze. Oh. <laughs> oh I'd rather not. <laughs> <laughs> But no, so, like, there needed to be a few moments in this show where, like, just simple, stupid stuff of, like, one guy's lifting a big rock, uh, you yeah. know, while they're sailing, you know, like, have Isildur, you know, single-handedly catch a guy that was going to fall overboard or something like that. Not just, uh, like, humans do-do-doing. Yeah, yeah, not just, oh, I need 45 Numenorians to sail one boat. It's like, no, like, there needs to be a smaller crew to show how capable they are. Or, Dude, like, that's you, a you really sh- great point. So it's just, like, little things to just dis- convey to, you know, the general public that these are not the Southlands. These guys yeah. are literally built different, and they didn't do anything anything to do that and so that's why like yeah you 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 got me with the the political intrigue guy for sure i was definitely wrong about that and well, that's it's not great. about wrong or right like it's not your fault but like no, no, and i'm not, I'm not saying not. that like as like a gotcha moment but it's just like okay there is st- stuff like that there was political dissent and like a little finger in there that's great but you have to show that the rest of the people are above that. Like, that that's why it worked. Because one guy was like, oh, a little shady. It's like, you know, that Ricky Gervais movie, like, The Invention of Lying. It's like, oh, this has never happened before. So when I start lying, people don't think I'm lying. Because lying was not invented. I about that movie. I think it's come up on TikTok a few times. Like, randomly, TikTok will show me, like, two-minute clips of, like, random dad movies. And that's one of them. And it's like, oh, okay. Completely forgot that that movie exists. Yeah. So it's it's there's so much that I like the 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 CGI Numenor looks great. It's uh, beautiful. Some of the sets look really good as well. Um, Isildur, uh, Elendil is great. I don't know how I feel about Isildur and his sister. Um, it's a weird. It's a weird choice. I think he'll grow to uh, he'll grow on us. I, cause, yeah. You know what struck me too with the reintroduction of him. Um, uh, us coming to this rewatch and your observation of like Halbrand being like, I'm just so mad. I'm going to go on my year roundabout. Yeah. You know, as Sildor is like, oh, my go dad's backpack. credit card. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't stay in hostels, but like my hotel's next to one. Um, yeah. As Sildor is like the poor version of that. Like he doesn't, he wants to shirk his responsibilities too. Uh, that's okay so what was your read on a steel door because like he's like staring off into the ocean like is it he wants to explore the world and not be a sailor he doesn't want to be a sailor he uh it, it's hard to say either his mother's calling to him or he's being called to go to the west where his brother has gone his okay. brother goes into the west i don't remember much more beyond that but um that's something that's like the the land is calling to him. He's he's call, he's being called to do more. Got it. Okay, because like that, like it's that really whole, unclear though. It's really unclear, and like the dinner scene where his sister gets into college. <laughs> what what am I? What, <laughs> is, it, it, is this? Uh, this she is doesn't us? exist. Like, she doesn't. Yes, that's exactly right. It's like I. I understand you need to, like, establish, like, a foothold in Numenor because it's, like, the new storyline that's going to take place. You know, we, we keep fla- – like, even when they go to Middle-earth, we flash back to the the bearded guy and the daughter and her, the daughter's love interest, apparently. Like, that's his son, right? The bearded guy's son It ends up being – It is his son. That's correct. Yeah. And they're, so, like – they they're elf haters together. Yeah. Great. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, it's not my elf. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's just like uh, there's just there's some there are some hits in in the Numenor stuff, and there's some big misses, at least for me, because you have like the entire. If you've only seen the movies, the entire trilogy is about the fact that Aragorn simply has the blood of Numenor in him, makes him a God among men. A better person. Just a better he, person. Just a better... He is 87, and he is still fighting with the best of them. 
Like it is wild and it's it's so established, even not in the extended cut, it's so well established. And it's not established here. I was so like I remember watching this and being just like sorely disappointed of like, all right. Again, like everyone's just a dude. Like what that's the thing is that Peter Jackson knew where to place lighting, just lighting and costuming of just like this person's better than everybody. It just tells the story. That's all. Yeah. Like he lets that's that's where the fine line of like don't sh- don't show us, let us know it. Like Yeah. Show and, don't and tell. It's just I, like, oh, yo, there's this. Okay. From this thing, I know who this person is. Like yeah. you don't you don't need to have, you know, Galadriel like quietly saying under her breath like the entire history of Numenor and the elves. Because you're also not going to retain that. No one's going to retain that. I didn't retain it. We watched it yesterday. Clearly. Clearly. So, when, then Lendiel starts, you know, doing a meet cute with Galadriel. She holds up a, a knife to him, doesn't she? She's like, I'm oh, about to yeah. kill him. She's about to and kill him. They, yeah, and then she goes, they go to the towers. They find the seal that makes her think that Halbrand is the king she oh, finds him in jail that the seal looks exactly like mordor or the well no the it's a different seal he they find that information too okay yeah. they they don't no so she realizes the mark that was carved into her brother for no good fucking reason by the way like why are we carving this into your brother a thousand years ago you know um because he's, it's not like, it's, it's, it's supposed to be like, hey, everybody, go to Mordor. She doesn't realize it's a map. It's not a mark of the evil one. It's a map. Hey, you know, real estate a thousand years ago was so cheap. Sauron invested early. Sauron's a boomer. He's a boomer. Like, oh, why don't you kids buy a mountain range with a bunch of land? In my day, it was three gold shekels. <laughs> What's it now? Oh, 50 million? Ah, oh, sounds like you just need to go up with a firm handshake and ask, I want an evil land surrounded by a volcano. No more, no more avocado toast for you. <laughs> You're getting <laughs> Starbucks every day. That's why you can't do it. You're charging it on your card. You didn't learn any better. You could just walk to the Southlands. Um, yeah, no, it's just dumb anyway. They, she figures it out like a dummy that it's actually a fucking map. And that he has this, 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 there is a line that he is denoted by the two different things she learns. It's also that God awful tapestry is something else. It is wild that in 2019, we have rise <laughs> of Skywalker where Ray holds up a dagger to the death star. And it's like, Oh, this is what it means. Cause it matches. Even though if you take 10 steps to the left and hold the dagger up, it's not going to match. Or, you know, if, like, the wreckage is from the Death Star that fell from space. Oh, I forgot. This was the opening of it, wasn't it? Yeah. The, and, uh, the third movie. Oh, my and, God. And so th- that's what this feels like. Is like, three years wow. later, they're like, oh, this marking that was marked a thousand wow. years ago. You know, erosion doesn't happen. There's no tectonic plates in Middle Earth. Like... <laughs> There's nothing that changes a landscape <laughs> in a thousand years. But no, it's nope, it's nope. it's uh it's uh, the Southlands. Don't worry about it. Yep. No, no, don't worry about it, guys. You got it. Um, yeah. All right. So then, oh God, we realized that Nori's dad over at the Harfoots was putting up like the maypole. That's what he broke his ankle for. Was like for like the end of harvest season or the end of um the them living out this season in this particular yeah, it's like part their of migration the party. Yeah. Correct. They you know they're about to fuck. About to like, may I may pull my eyes out anytime but- <laughs> I see the hardfoots. <laughs> Clip it. Clip uh, it. So uh at this point Nori's got the idea to pull out the map from Claghorn's book, whatever that guy's name is. And Foghorn Leghorn, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you heard me. Um, and like there is the kind of funny sequence where Poppy's like, You have a little bit left. No, yeah. are you right? To get, you know, it's kind of cute. Uh then but the f- why she needs the why she can't just like wait under the table and then do it right after he leaves. Because he takes know. the book with him. But it's not in the book. She's already it taken is in the, the book. page out. 
It's no. Th- she's taken the page out of it already. No, it's not yet. He's, he's, she's trying to get it out of the page, out of the book. The book's closed, though. Yeah, and it, she, she started looking at it, and she closed the book right away because he was coming, and that, like, part of the p- leaf lit was out. But not all the way out. She had to like just pull, I, it's dumb. It's a forced issue. That yeah. sh- let me stop. Let stop making me ex- explain their poor choices, please. <laughs> Excuse me. <sighs> so they finally get it. She hands it over to the stranger, and he burns the fucking thing up. Yep. And finally reveals himself to the Harfoots. This giant. And in a comedy room. of errors i'm like whoa <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa yeah and they're like what is that and it's it's a dude um and you know during before they reveal him or he he burns the thing up the harfoots are doing the you we, we wait for you oh, ceremony wait for you that it just it's incongruent here's my argument it's unexcusable so okay the only maybe like people that they should feel bad for having died are Poppy's family. Because, yeah. and it's sad, it's sad. Like, you realize, okay, Poppy's actually alone. She had, like, three siblings, and both her parents washed away in a landslide. What the fuck was Poppy doing? Question A. And question B, like, sh- not question B, just B. Because you know they didn't try and save them. You know, like, they didn't, like, oh, I'll But they're in a landslide, run. like, something's wrong. Some, so, something yeah. happened quickly, and they got fucked. So, yeah, we do wait for you because nature happened. The other ones, you can kind of insinuate that they leave them behind. They do. There's no insinuation. Like, because so they... Then as- why, but then, hold, this is my argument. If that's true, why say we wait for you when they fucking didn't? <laughs> do you know because, I mean? <laughs> because the Harfoots suck. There's no... <laughs> like... They they act, there needed to be like, oh, winter's coming, or there needed to be a reason. I understand that they're nomads. And they and migrate. They migrate, but there needs to be like a reason that we cannot wait. We have to get, you know, across the country to when the berries bloom. Otherwise, yes. the deer are going to get them or something. Or <coughs> like they hint at the wolves that like are 20 feet away, but can't smell them. They're like, oh, no. This the spring is coming, so the wolves are out. We have to go, and they just they don't do, ever do that. They don't That's ever so true. They don't ever give like the sense of urgency to why they need to migrate right now to where they can't give you know Nori's dad a week to heal. But even then, like he walks after the chief when like they discover the stranger, and he's like, "Oh, we're not gonna banish you. We're not gonna leave you behind," even though his wife. Is just like, oh yeah, they're done. They're decaravaned or whatever it's called. Like Which that's it too. Like, you know what? Decaravan them. Because why are we making special concessions for Nori out of thousands of years of traditions? Because she's a main like, character. I know, but that's dumb too. Like there's yeah. no stakes now. Yeah. And then him it's so funny because like they're like, oh, we're gonna be in the back, and then they show him obviously struggling. But then, like, they have him, like, holding, like, his lower back, like, oh, man, this this caravan. It's like, you you just showed a whole episode of him breaking his ankle and his back is the problem? Like, you're so inconsistent. He wouldn't even be able to walk, bro. He wouldn't even no. be able to walk. Not on that. Like, no. so have him hobbling to the side. But then this is, this is, is where. This is, I'm throwing Nori over the riverbank. Like. So, like. You're telling me she's the pro tag and her dad can't walk and she throws a 7,000 pound, 25 foot giant in their cart. She's trying to, as smuggle? I said in the watch along, she throws Shaq into their cart. <laughs> That's not like, he is like seven something feet tall. Like he, like, it's not like he's a oh, big dude. He's not a big person. He's not one of the big folk. He is a literal giant. Like, he is taller than most things in this world. And instead of, like, be like, oh, you just have to sneak behind us or whatever or walk, you know. Or put gotta... one of those reeds on your back and look like a fucking shoot in the grass yeah. that we're walking through. Yeah. Oh, my 
Oh, how funny would that be if we see him carrying? That's like, all you needed. <laughs> that's all you needed. Was that's a way better move than that. Then they, she literally puts him in the cart, and they're already falling behind. Like they're gonna die, and you didn't think to be like, "Hey, you're injured." We, I think it's like a big like moment in this next episode. They're like, "Oh, he can push the cart. We're gonna make it." It's like. No shit, Sherlock. <laughs> We've already not decaravanned you for showing this stranger our people. Use him, bitch. Right? <laughs> like, I don't, I don't understand it. You're supposed to be like the fun, adventurous, smart type. Like, this is such a layup. This yeah. is such a layup of a thing, and you waste an entire ep. This like cut this part of the episode where it's just like, oh, like you. Oh, we're going to be in the back. And then you have them like passing up other caravans because of the giants, like just fucking huffing. Like, <gasps> like he's like a, a like a backpacker. Genius. And, like, it's a easiest, like just alley-oop. You got Shaq. Well, there's Kobe dunking it right there. It's just like, it's <laughs> right there. That's it's right brilliant. there to do it, to like get Nori back on, on like the good side of like, and then you have, you know, the, the the chief the chief Harfoot like given like a little chuckle and then you have like his wife like scowling it's like that's a dunk that's the easiest <laughs> dunk right there of like oh you got the old hag just dunked right in her face because she said more than once that we should leave Nori's family for dead and you have like oh you know the chief the chief knew that this was gonna happen he knew that like this giant would would come into play. And then I think, you know, the next episode or two is like when he saves them from the wolves. But then like he does like in an evil way. So like, whoa, whoa, like we got to watch this guy. And then you right. put the doubt back in the other Harfoots because they're scared little little Harfoots. It's so easy. It's I just like I just did like ugh. it's it when you try too hard to to be when you're trying to be something rather than let it be. It's the same concept as like show us don't you know know it don't show it you know yeah like let it be let it be funny let them be the comic relief do that you know because you're totally right ultimately there's not a lot of redemptive qualities about nori right now and there should be there really yeah, and should like be. you have you can have nori like sitting on his shoulders with like the reed so like it still looks like he's camouflaged like hilarious hilarious, hilarious. and you just have her like uh, just like waving as they pass <laughs> by everybody or like you know give like the little shrug or something like i don't know this and the dad's in the back of the caravan in the fucking wheelbarrow yeah. smoking a stone yeah he's, he's like, got his leg up and he's just yeah. like we and he'll you know what he says we wait for you boom <laughs> We'll wait for you when we get to yeah, where we going. get there a day early because <laughs> we got fucking Yao Ming carrying our shit for us. Like it's it's so easy. Like oh. it's so good. Do you know and how much I I liked basketball but wasn't good at it? All I could do was D. And like anytime someone threw the I know anyone anytime someone threw the ball to me, I just go like shoot it <laughs> frantically. <laughs> really not good hey there's plenty of people that made it to the league not being able to shoot and could only play defense totally listen i i i, I knew to watch the hips and not where the ball was going you know you got to watch the body like it's yeah. all i only have that going for me though all right so we did the hard foots we did most of the numenorean galadriel shit what else happened in this episode do we even oh, remember the, the the best part of the episode is all the arondir stuff with uh oh yeah like he oh see god him. i've been saving it for the the, the last it's, I it's guess. the best part it's the best part because even though okay so the town gets sucked under by an underground tunnel arondir gets captured in an underground tunnel but suddenly the tunnel isn't underground anymore it's just like cresting uh, upward it seems like i like, guess it's, but it's they it, why are they digging this tunnel if it's not underground? Yeah, like why is there this thing? They keep on saying too, like, no, you got sun duty today, and like it's not even like sub, like there's not like a, a foot underneath them, right? They're just no, like they're just above ground with like a, a basically a sheer tent blocking like direct so what's the sunlight. Point? You're I totally don't... right, and that's what confused me is that like this obviously is supposed to be a sneak attack to wherever they're going. And there, you could, 
the land, like, you know, when they try and escape, you can see the land around them is burnt to a crisp and ash and everything. Like, there's nothing, I don't know if they're done with the stealth part of it, but I don't, are, are they building, are they no longer building a tunnel? Are they building the ditch for the water to flow to the mountain? Is that what they're, is that what they're doing? I can't remember. That's, that's what, that's why they've been tunneling underground. The whole thing has been. That's what I thought. To get the water, which is. Honestly, when that happened and that was the reveal and I'm looking forward Great. to that Can't scene. Can't wait for that episode. It's really Best clever. Episode. It's yeah. clever cuz it it serves two purposes ultimately. The the A, if the orcs just wanted to get to the southland, they would just travel at night. They yeah. don't need to tunnel all day long. Do you know what I mean? That would be like totally adding weeks to their trip that they wouldn't need. But I think maybe if we suspend disbelief a little bit here, perhaps they're at the point now where they need the their tunnel to start cresting upward. That's why yeah. we're here. That's the only part I can understand part of their green, their, not their green, their blueprints. That, that's the only thing I can think of. <laughs> their green prints. Well, I don't know. <laughs> no, I just like, because they're orcs, they're green prints. Yeah, <laughs> they, they, what, that's their color, that's their theme. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't otherwise understand why they did that, if that makes sense. Yeah. And then like, we're going to get to the good stuff, but just like when they ask, you know, them to cut down the tree, it's like, Ugh. just, you're already under it. Just dig under the tree. Cause like he chops it down. We see it later. It's just a stump. And it's like, that's still in the way of you digging your tunnel. Like <laughs> it, 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 100. Yeah. We also were talking about like. The best way to get rid of that tree, now that the roots are pretty darn well exposed, by the way, there's like hardly any, someone like got in there and didn't it's even like, like half, It's like half exposed, yeah. Yeah, it's like all Just like pull the dusted. Tree down. Yeah, it really is. Just pull the tree down. Yeah. Don't cut it. Like, at this point, the tree shouldn't even be there. Like, it, you have better leverage pulling the tree down. Granted, we wouldn't get the beautiful moment with a Ron Deere you know, praying to well, you it. Can, you can do that. Like when he's like tying the rope around the tree or something, like you can have him like, you know, totally. put his hand up to it. Like, so, but yeah, but it is a, like the jailbreak scene is great. Um, the, the, the throat cutting of the elf. It's like, I understand that they needed to make it quick, but they should have like stabbed him in the gut or something like that. That way you can just like have his hands over his belly and like have like the cloth kind of darken that way. It doesn't need to be bloody. You don't, I don't need to see like intestines pouring out or anything like that. Like I don't need to see Verhoeven. Sure. <laughs> but just like it looks like a shaving cut. It, it, it's it, not it, deep enough, especially to kill an elf. And this thing is like it needs to be deep because it's a throat cut. But I understand that like you, this isn't a bloody show. I'm totally OK with that. I don't I don't need to see Game of Thrones gore in this. I don't need to see the Red Wedding in this moment. Ugh. But just like it needs to look like a fatal wound and it just doesn't like there's a moment even like the MCU does it in like Black Panther where Michael B. Jordan like has one of the Dormelage like knife to throw and like she's like, oh, Wakanda forever. And he does it. And they do like the slow motion fall. And it's like her neck is completely fine. It's like, don't do a throat cut if you're not even going to put makeup or a, a fake wound on it. And this is kind of the, in the same vein. Just have a different fatal injury. There's plenty of fatal injuries you can do. That are like quick and, you know, shock. It's a great moment of like, you think the water's poisoned, they, they each drink it, and then like, you, do, you know something's coming, you don't know what it is. But it's a really good moment, and then the jailbreak itself is great, until we get the warg. Well, so I, I wanted to say, what, what I liked about this, the throat slit that mm -hmm. was insidious, was that's how thin the knife was that got him and how quick and clean the cut was that it did take a second to bleed. Right. But then we needed to see more blood. We needed to see yeah. how deep that was like could or it poison been... there. It's an orc, oh. orc dagger. So just like have like, you know, the, the, the black, you know, veins coming from the wound or something like that, that. would actually kill an elf. Anyway, I was sad when that happened. Cause I liked that actor, but you're right. Like something had to happen and they built the tension just right. Yeah. But yes, very well done. 
Yes. Then we get their attempt to, they finally like organize their attempt to escape. And the head elf that we met in the first episodes, like even if one of us gets out, you know, we can warn everyone else what's coming. So we're aware that like the majority of the elves aren't going to make it out of this alive, but they created a version. They whip the chain at one of the guys, right? Or something. It's good stuff. Sick. And then they start hammering away. This is actually this is a pretty good piece of detail. They uh, rested like a like a one of the daggers from the orcs, and then used that underneath their crisscross of chains to then break the chains. Yeah. So Because if you were just doing it on the ground, you you wouldn't have any give. So I just thought that was a really clever, you know. Yeah, good detail. Totally. And then, yeah, like Arondir takes down a couple of bros. They're fighting, and then. Out comes the Porg. Like the the Chihuahuarg. The Chihuahua. <laughs> like I the understand. Butt-warg. I don't I don't need the same design as the Peter Jackson trilogies. I don't need cracked out Chihuahua Taco Bell warg. Like like the the bearing of the teeth, like the 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 fidgeting it's doing. Like it was it was a very strange design. And so when it just like murks two elves immediately, I'm just like, oh, I guess it is dangerous, but it doesn't look dangerous. It looks, it looks like, like what's what a dog must have looked like when it they tried to like like what it, it would look like what if you mixed a pug and a wolf together and it's got problems. <laughs> it's like yeah, you know, it's like okay, some parts didn't mash up well, and it's yeah. it's not going well for this. I, I will say this, though, like they were on the right path by like making it a female, like a like clearly a female warg. Like that was disturbing, too. Yeah. Like, but the, but there wasn't something like like going like it was like pinky in the brain and we got the pinky warg or something like that. Yeah, it, it really it looked like a like a science experiment that was about to fall apart like at any moment, like a like a Cronenberg type thing that was like, yeah. oh, it's literally like melting in front of our eyes. But until it like self-destructs, it's going to kill other things. It's like the thing, the, the dog from the thing, for yeah. sure. Yeah, it's 100 percent that. Then I guess like he traps it with the I don't remember what happened exactly. I think but... he does it like in the tree stump. Like, yeah. It, it gets... And then it's dead or something. I guess he killed it. I don't know. No, it's still but, alive. I, oh, it, perhaps. No, I don't maybe, remember. I don't know. Maybe he does kill it. Oh, yeah. He does. Like he as it's going after the older elf, like Arondir throws the sword at it. And like that's like what springs him. And then he's about to get out. And then. Well, gets... it was just. Well, before that happens, this is what I love. Like the finally, like one of the orcs, like takes the chain to like whip a, a rondier back. A rondier grabs that one piece of twig and like gets it, jabs it into the throat of the uh, guy. Good there's moment. Like, good moment. There's some sick a rondier stuff. Like they just really they they really got the perfect timing down of not too slow mo, but enough seeing like frame for frame what he's doing. And they're just using yeah. that man's beautiful body perfectly. And they then. Are. That, I think, affords the lead elf to break free, run mm-hmm. out, and then just get bore mirrored. Like, like they didn't look outside above the Yeah, Arondir was above the pit, cutting that tree down, and he didn't see any scouts or anything like that. Like, they didn't go, oh, by the way, go left. Don't go that way, you know? Because as Arondir is about to follow suit and run out after lead elf dude elf dude turns around and there's one big orc arrow in his chest yep dumb 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 they pull him back uh then finally we get like the blurry shot of adar and we think it's sauron and it it sort of works i'm sad we didn't get to see adar but the build up to uh who is adar is it does work for me in this episode it does like you know like we were looking through quotes and it's like oh i'll do this for adar but not for you and just like oh take him to adar and everything is for adar and so we just like we hear this name every time we're around a rondier this whole with episode. like reverence and like yeah y- you like know they are like, bowing to him when he starts approaching yeah and it, um uh ulrich uh one of our patrons who we did the watch long was like that shot of his gauntlet with the fingers it looks exactly like the shot in 
you know, in Lord of the Rings, when we see Sauron come out to the battle, when they show the close up of the ring, those are the same spiky fingers that he's got. So it's a great mislead. It really is a great mislead. And I'm really excited for this next episode because this conversation between him and Arondi is great. This actor's just so good. He takes over the show um, with every scene that he's in. So it's a real shame we're not getting him back. Yeah. Uh, and like we'll say that a thousand times over the next five episodes. I really think it's like got to be challenging for the actor that's taking over that role too. Like, is he just going to do, you know, a version of that guy or is he going to try and make the character his own? You know, like Like, that's a challenge. Yeah. It's, it's a real thankless job because either you're going to love it and, but you're still going to compare it or you're going to hate it. You're going to miss the other guy. So it's just, yeah, totally. Well, yeah, I, I do not envy him his position. No. So we want to know if you guys think we're so off base or now that you're rewatching it along with us, what's something you noticed that we forgot to mention or like, oh, God, this just didn't age well or this actually got better. Or if you think the Stranger storyline actually is good, uh, th- then unfollow us. Uh, you can <laughs> <laughs> unfollow us on Instagram and podcast, uh, and uh, Twitter. You can find those handles in the liner notes. You can also support us if you'd like going to patreon.com forward slash podcast of the rings for as little as two dollars you can join us on this watch along and we have so many fun things coming up with patreon as we grow so help us get to you know 10 patron subscribers 10 15 we're gonna do the you know script read we're gonna watch lord of the g-strings so help us make this a fun community you want to be a part of the watch alongs the watch alongs are a lot of fun so honestly if you guys We've been doing them every Monday uh, for the last two Mondays, and I really enjoyed them. Like, it's a great way to to watch the show. Like, it, we're not talking the whole time, so don't worry about that. We're not like, you know, a YouTube react show. Um, we're just watching. Sure. We're, we're commenting fun stuff. We're commenting real stuff. Like, it's it's a good time. It's a good way to, like, rewatch these episodes and, like, see new things in the moment that we talked about here. With our friends, yeah. With, with maybe things we might not have caught otherwise yeah. on watch alongs with ourselves so yeah i think that about does it ben thanks as always for making this the best part of my day and thanks for you listener out there also don't forget to give us five star reviews wherever you listen to this podcast because that also do goes it way that's free it is free we would take that though we want to know what you think and until next time my friends may our paths meet again 